Today, we are over by Richardson Bay. Gonna walk along the water here. My wife Lizzie's joining me, as Hi you can guys. see. And we're gonna talk about how little of a home people can afford now, even if you have a decent budget, guys. Because one thing that these high interest rates have done is make homes completely unaffordable. And I have an interesting example of this. Say you have a home buyer that had $3,000 a month monthly budget for their payment. And when you go to get qualified for a loan, your mortgage broker, your bank, your lender, whoever you're working with is going to qualify you based on how much you can afford to spend monthly, okay? So in this case, someone that has a $3,000 monthly budget, right now at a 7.4% mortgage rate, they can afford a $429,000 house. But last year, just one year ago, they could have spent an additional $71,000 on a house with that same $3,000 monthly budget, which would have basically enabled them to buy a half a million dollar home just one year ago. And with this example, you can see just how much interest rates have an impact on how expensive of a house someone can afford to buy, okay? And that's one thing people need to understand about this housing market right now. When we have a situation like this, where people's purchasing power keeps dwindling with the interest rates going up and an environment where the Fed says they might need to hike rates even further than they are at right now, we could easily be looking at 8% mortgage rates or higher by the end of this year. And so you keep seeing an environment where the monthly payment continues to go up and interest rates are not falling so the only other way for buyers to be able to afford homes is for either one they need to make more money to be able to afford the extra payment or number two home prices need to come down or maybe a combination of both and even when you just put this same example the same mathematical example uh, with the average home payment right now people are paying twenty seven hundred dollars a month right now on average for a mortgage Well, just one year ago when rates were five and a half percent the payment would have been twenty three hundred dollars a month So you're talking about a four hundred dollar a month savings in interest alone Okay, because all this extra money is going towards interest guys You're buying the same house and essentially paying four hundred dollars a month more and putting that money into the bank's pocket and to me, that's just another argument right now of why not to buy right now, because it'd be one thing to pay all that money in interest if the home prices were much lower to justify that increase in interest. But when you still have high home prices plus the high interest payments, it doesn't seem worth it, guys. All you're doing is putting money in the bank's pocket. You're not building equity with these mortgages and where these interest payments are at. So I don't understand why people are so gung-ho about getting into this right now because all you're doing is putting yourself in the poor house and making the banks rich. And that's the funny thing too, right? Because these high interest rates are designed to actually bring the cost of everything down because the housing market has been a huge part of the inflation numbers recently. The high interest rates are supposed to take housing prices down. And last year it started to do that, but we saw a massive uptick back in prices again during this spring and summer buying season. So much so that the prices already got back to where they were last year, not, if not even higher in some cases in different places across the country. And so when the Fed sees this, they're like, wait a minute, I think we need to keep interest rates higher for longer and maybe even raise them even more. So to me, it's just a matter of time before you see this whole thing start to fall apart with these high interest rates because high interest rates equals asset prices going down, guys. That's how it always has worked historically. And when you're looking at a situation right now where it's not really working like that, the system is fundamentally broken. I think the Fed is gonna continue pushing that interest rate hike button more and more and more until this whole thing gets resolved. So naturally, what these high interest rates do when you're the buyer is like, well, I'm just gonna offer less money because I need to get the house at a cheaper price in order to make up for the difference in what I'm gonna be paying in these extra interest payments. Except the problem is still, and has been for the last about year and a half, is inventory is still too low, guys. And when we have inventory as low as it is, it still doesn't work in the buyer's favor, unfortunately. And until the inventory problem is resolved, we're gonna be seeing this issue for quite some time. And 
I'm just wondering if all these people that would potentially sell are going to be able to hang on long enough with these high interest rates because on the one hand you could say well people aren't going to list their homes until interest rates fall because that's what they're all waiting for however if the economy goes south because interest rates are too high for too long which is a very likely scenario we're going to talk about later in this video then a lot of people are not going to be able to hang on because nothing's going to be there for them to be able to hang on to because the economy will be going down too fast and people aren't going to have the income to hang on. Now the University of Chicago did a study and presented their study to the Fed on Friday at the Fed's annual meeting in Jackson Hole, Wyoming. Okay, And what this paper essentially says is that our findings suggest that monetary policy may affect the productive capacity of the economy in the long term. A slower pace of innovation may then have lasting effects. So essentially what they're saying here is the longer we see this high interest rate environment, the more devastating it's going to be to the economy for years to come, guys, because the idea was that the Fed probably thought, well, we're going to raise rates and it's going to be enough to tank everything to the point where we, don't, we can already start lowering them. They thought probably, hey, we're going to already be lowering rates by now. Well, that turns out to be not the case. And because inflation has been so sticky, which we know is mostly related to housing, they're going to keep these rates higher for longer. But in turn, the rest of the economy is going to suffer. And what their study found is that a one percentage point increase in interest rates by the Fed could reduce economic output by 1% up to nine years later. Can you imagine that? Whatever they're doing right now has consequences down the road almost a decade later. That sounds kind of unbelievable and it's kind of hard to fathom what they're doing right now could have lasting effects into the next decade. So think about this. The Fed has raised interest rates by five percentage points already this year and over 500 basis points since they started hiking rates. So this could have an effect on the future economy as much as a 5% lower economic output within the next 10 years, which is pretty wild if you think about it. And the Fed is in a real dilemma right now because on the one hand, inflation is going the wrong direction, but they know that if they continue with their monetary policy of where it's at right now, then they're very likely to induce the economy into a recession. And that's what they've been trying to avoid. And that's what that whole term, the soft landing is about. That's what they've been trying to achieve, this balance of where they can increase the interest rates high enough to lower inflation, but not too high to the point where they put us into a recession. And it looks like that's not gonna happen. We already know that's not gonna happen because last year we already saw two quarters of negative GDP growth, but they didn't call it a recession, okay? And that's when they were already increasing the rates. Economists in the past never used to think that this was the case, that raising interest rates in the short term would have anything to do with economic output in the future. But now that's starting to be challenged because the idea here is by making borrowing more expensive, higher interest rates can reduce consumer and business demand for products and services. That can make it less profitable for companies to develop new offerings and come up with innovations that increase efficiency and spark faster growth. So basically what they're saying is this suppresses the economy to the point that businesses are not going to be thriving because their borrowing costs are too high and now they're going to be just more focused on staying in business and keeping the lights on rather than on innovating and you know moving the company forward and that's the problem here and that's why they're saying that these high interest rates are going to lead to less than desirable future economic growth. And also what these high rates mean for companies is it makes it more expensive for them to take out a loan. It also makes it more expensive for them to launch a new product or business. Stock market investors get spooked and are more likely to invest in safer assets like bonds rather than take a chance on keeping the money in the stock market when these interest rates are high and things aren't going well. And supposedly this study is saying that same 1% increase in the Fed's interest rate hikes can also reduce a company's spending power by 1% to 3% within the next 1% to 3 years. And they also have found out that patents for new inventions declined by up to 9% in the 2-4 to four years following that 1% hike. So 
this can really stifle the economy. And you know what, guys? I don't care. You know why? Because things have been too easy for too long with this free money, basically, with these cheap interest rates. People need to get back to reality. If it stifles growth, so what? You know? I think we need to just accept that for what it is and get used to this being the new normal and asset prices are going to have to follow and everything's going to be back to a new normal eventually. That's what I think should happen. Whether or not it's going to play out that way, I have no idea. But I think that in an environment like this where the value of our currency is at threat and inflation is running too high and things are too expensive, I think that's a much better route than going back to the way things were before and having a low interest rate environment where everything continues to get more and more expensive and the wages don't keep up and we're right back where we were you know, a year and a half ago with inflation running double digits. The University of Chicago that put together this study, they're saying that they're not necessarily telling the Fed, well, you should have lower interest rates, but they're saying what they should do is they should have government grants and subsidies to bolster innovation and you know, kind of jumpstart businesses in the economy. In other words, give free money to people, guys. So what do you think about that idea? <laughs> we see how well that worked out with all the PPP loans and the EIDL loans and everything else that went out during the pandemic. Did we see any major innovations come along the way? You know, not really. Maybe AI, you know, but that's been in the works before the pandemic. So it's not like that's really a new thing. But other than that, what other industries have really come a long way since all that money was given out? I can't think of anything. So to say that just giving money away to businesses is going to be the answer to this, I think it's not. But what do I know? I'm just a YouTuber. And I saw another interesting story today talking about how because homes are so expensive, this can actually be yet another threat to the economy to where things might come down even further in the future because homes are too expensive. One thing that we know is affordability for homes is at a 40 year low. So people can't afford to buy like we just talked about earlier because the interest rates are too high at these prices anyhow. And when you look at this chart, you can see just how unaffordable a house is, guys. And this chart goes all the way back to 1986. And literally homes are less affordable now than they were back then. And it's always been more affordable since then. So this is really a bad time in history to be buying when you're looking at that. And this is the number one thing I caution people against, but I wanna stick with the theme of this story here because the idea is the decline in housing affordability could have lasting effects on the future economy as well. You have so many people that still want to buy a house but can't, but are looking at these creative financing things that are coming out like the 1% mortgages now being offered from Zillow and Rocket Mortgage and those guys that want you to get in with basically no money down. You have a comeback with these balloon mortgages that people are looking at. People are looking at adjustable rate mortgages, anything that they can get their hands on to get into a house right now. Problem is, even if those people end up getting a house with these creative financing options, basically all their money is gonna be going towards the house, guys, in the form of the actual mortgage payments, in the form of maintaining it, in the form of every expense that comes along with owning a house. But guess what? Guess what that allows them not to do? It means that they don't have enough money left over to go out to restaurants, they don't have enough money left over to take vacations or buy a car or buy anything else because it's all going towards the house when affordability is at an all-time low. So this, in turn, also can have a huge negative impact on the future spending that people are gonna have because if people don't have the money to go out and spend on anything else besides the house, how is that gonna help out the rest of the economy? And one thing that I've covered many times that some of you are still asking me about, so I'm gonna cover it again right now, are the mortgage rate buy-downs, okay? And to me, this is one of the number one reasons why new construction is still being sought after as much as it is because in case you don't know what a mortgage rate buy down is it's when a seller of a house doesn't matter if it's a builder or an actual seller they give you a mortgage rate buy down and what that does is it lowers your monthly interest rate temporarily for the first two or three years that you own the house at a time like right now when interest rates are seven and a half percent for a 30-year mortgage they might say well 
We'll give you the first year at 5.5%, the second year will be at 6%, the third year will be at 6.5%, and after that, you'll be back to a 7.5% rate. And that's enough to get people in the door because like I explained earlier, when you're looking at the average house payment dropping from 2,700 down to 2,300, that could be enough to make it affordable for somebody. But here's the problem. People save that $400 a month, right? They get a lower monthly payment. They're like, oh great, well now that's $400 a month. I can go ahead and buy this new Tesla or buy the new BMW or I can use that money to go on vacation for this and that, right? But the problem is there's a deadline to that savings and every year the house is gonna to continue to get more expensive, not only because your mortgage payment's gonna be going up due to a higher interest rate year after year, but also because the cost of ownership goes up year after year, guys. So you can easily see how saving that $400 a month can snowball into spending an extra $800 a month five years down the road due to the higher cost of housing, higher cost of living, and mortgage rates going back up to where they initially qualified at with the 7.5%. So right now, everybody's wondering what's gonna happen with these new home purchases when the Fed continues to raise interest rates? And it's a good question to ask because if the builders are giving mortgage rate buy-downs to all of the potential home buyers to get them through the door, maybe there's no limit to how high the interest rates can be raised to that can stop people from buying new construction homes as long as the builders are giving a buy down. Because as long as people are getting that temporary relief to get in the door, they can afford it at first, that's gonna be good enough for a lot of people, I think, to go ahead and pull the trigger even right now. Now, when people get these mortgage rate buy downs, they have to qualify for the house at what the interest rate is going to be at the end of that buy down period. So if it's seven and a half percent, then they have to qualify at what, it, what the payment would be at seven and a half percent. But like I said, guys, people are vulnerable to increased spending, lifestyle inflation. If people see they have an extra five, six hundred dollars a month laying around, a lot of people won't have the discipline not to spend it. When you fill the line items on your budget with that extra money that you're saving on the house payment and that savings is no longer there, but you still have a payment on that new car, what are these people going to do? So like I said, when the last video with everybody who's getting these 1% mortgages and everything like that, this is a recipe for disaster. And I think you're gonna see a lot of foreclosures coming in the future because of all these different shenanigans that get people in the door right now without worrying about where the consequences of that go later down the road. Because in case you can't tell, all of this is designed to get you to just sign on the dotted line today, forget about tomorrow, forget about how much it's all gonna cost later on, that doesn't matter because we all need to just make a sale today. So unless all these people that are signing up for this start making a lot more money in the near future, it's gonna be a problem when everything continues to get more expensive. If you're somebody that's facing this and you're looking at taking advantage of one of these, you know, 1% mortgages or the mortgage rate buy downs, let me know how you guys are basically budgeting in the future. Let me know how you're anticipating how you're planning for future expenses with your house because that's a crucial thing that people need to be thinking about. So I want to know how you're gonna be handling this problem. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you subscribe to the channel. And if you don't wanna wait for my next video to come out, check out this one on the screen right over here, and I'll see you in the next one.